Hey, so I, 42, female, have been engaged to my fiancé, Harry, 44, male, for three years, and we have been together for almost six years now. The reason we have been engaged for so long, but haven't been able to get married yet, is because right after we got engaged, he received a job offer in the Middle East, and it was an incredibly lucrative job. He is a senior civil engineer, so he was asked to oversee a project there and stay there until it was finished. It was a lot of money that the company was offering, so we had a talk and he decided to take it up. We could always get married later and we had waited until we were in our 40s anyway. It wouldn't matter if we waited a little more, so we could live a lavish lifestyle later on. He comes back for a few weeks every year and we are both fine with this arrangement. Harry also has a 22 year old daughter and she has been living with me for almost the past year. She moved out recently and immediately decided to sue me for harassment. His daughter, let's call her Mandy, graduated around 10 months ago and after that Harry asked me to let her live in our house for a couple of weeks until she found a job and was able to rent a place of her own. I agreed because I had known Mandy for a long time and she had been a sweet girl, so I didn't have any problem living with her. Also, it was initially just supposed to be an arrangement for a couple of weeks, but weeks turned into months and she refused to do anything about it. Once she moved in with me, she was very grateful for the first couple of weeks, but then I started realizing that she had taken absolutely zero initiative to actually go out and search for jobs. All she would do was sit on the couch and watch crappy reality shows or hang out with her friends. After two months, I started asking her if she had started applying for jobs yet. And at first, she would just tell me that she was applying online. But she couldn't find anything that she liked. I even offered to help her out because I really didn't think that she was looking for anything. But she told me that she would know if she liked something. Eventually, she got really rude and told me to back off because she wanted to take her things at her own pace. And she didn't want me to rush her. Of course, she apologized wholeheartedly right after that and begged me not to tell her dad about it. So I didn't. She also promised me that she would start putting more of an effort into looking for jobs and wouldn't let me down. So that pacified me for a couple of weeks. But then I noticed that she had gone back to her usual behavior. Around the six month mark, things started getting really difficult for me to tolerate because she was 21. And I know that's really young, but she had made a promise to me and it didn't seem like she had any intention of living up to it because she hadn't changed her ways in the slightest. So I started pressuring her more and more to go out, look for something, do something with her life. But she did not seem affected by my insistence at all. In fact, I think it made her more lazy, if anything, because she even stopped pretending to look for opportunities. We had a lot of arguments about it and I threatened to kick her out several times, but I couldn't bring myself to do it because she wouldn't have anywhere else to go since her mother, Abigail, 44, female, had moved away a couple of weeks after Mandy left for college to take care of her parents. And for those who are wondering why I did not speak to her biological parents about this, I did. But all of us came to the same conclusion that no matter how much I threatened her, I wouldn't have it in me to actually kick her out when it came down to it. Call me what you want, but every time that I would end up fighting with her over this, she would apologize so profusely later on that I wouldn't have the heart to ask her to move out. Harry also tried to explain this to her a couple of months back when he was visiting and she promised him that she would change, but she didn't. So basically we had tried everything and it didn't work. And I was getting really exasperated because even though we had enough money, I just couldn't put up with a freeloader. And it was not even just about the money. She didn't even help with the household chores or run any errands and left it all up to me. 
It was the principle of the thing that bothered me so much. And some days back, I finally decided to confront her about it once and for all. I came back home from work one day to find her still sitting on the couch and realized that she hadn't moved from her position since when I had left home in the morning. That really pissed me off. And I instantly told her that it had been long enough now. She could either find a job and start pulling her weight around the household or get out of my house because this is no place for freeloaders. She started to get mad and told me that she was trying, but it was not her fault that the economy was in recession and there were no good opportunities. So yet again, I had to explain to her that people always start somewhere small and then work their way up. She can't just expect somebody to offer her the salary she wanted at her first job. It was the same argument. So I just told her that I had made up my mind and I didn't care what Harry or Abigail would have to say about this. But now she would have to move out. Then she tried to manipulate me by getting all sentimental and saying that she had always considered me a mother figure. And it would be really unfair of me to treat her like that. I had heard this speech a million times before, so then it had lost its initial charm and I could see right through her. So I told her that this was not going to work on me and I was serious. She even tried to play the, but I would have nowhere to go if you kick me out card. And I told her that she should have thought about that before doing nothing for the past year. And I told her that she had to find a job or I really would kick her out. At that point in time, I was so fed up with this entire situation that I didn't even feel bad for her when she started crying. It had happened enough times before. I couldn't afford to care about these things and keep letting this crap slide all the time. After I told her off, I even called Harry and Abigail up to let them know what was going on and they seemed to be fine with what I had said. We were all in agreement that eventually she would need to start pulling her own weight around the household and I couldn't let this go on. They even thanked me for doing this in their absence and actually even being there for Mandy for so long. That night, nothing really happened, but the very next morning I saw that Mandy had packed all her stuff and was gone before I even woke up. At first, I was slightly worried for her and wanted to call her up to get her to come back immediately. But then I decided against it because she was an adult and I was sure that she could take care of herself. So for the next couple of days, none of us had any contact with Mandy until I was served with a harassment lawsuit last week. It was a huge shock for me and I immediately decided to call her up, but she did not respond. So. I decided to speak to Harry and Abigail about it and they were just as shocked as I was. They told me that they would speak to her about it because the lawsuit itself was pretty ridiculous since she was accusing me of harassing her on the grounds that she was disabled and apparently I had promised to let her live with me in her father's absence but instead I had started verbally abusing her and would bully her almost every day because she couldn't find appropriate work that would also pay well due to her disability. So I would constantly taunt her about it and try to put her down and she had finally had it with me. So she was demanding that I pay her so that she could get therapy and try to recover. The disability she had picked to fake was epilepsy, which is a pretty serious issue and I couldn't believe that she would stoop so low for some money. Of course, after a brief discussion with her parents, I decided to fight back. She was not responding to any of us anyway, so it's not like we had the option to speak to her and try to make her see sense. If she had really made up her mind that she was going to do this, I was not going to back down either because I had been nice to her for the past year and that had not worked. So now maybe this would work. She needed to learn that there is no way to make easy money in this world, especially if you're faking a disability just for revenge. Last week, when we met at the mediators, I instantly accused her of not even having epilepsy in the first place, but somehow she had managed to put together proof 
and by that I meant fake medical records and prescriptions. I'm pretty sure she had bribed her way into this. But since she had no access to anybody's money, I didn't know how she got around it. Thankfully, when I brought this up with her parents, Abigail had me send the medical records to her, and she instantly told me that she recognized the letterheads on the documents and told me that she was pretty sure that she had spoken to her friend and got her father, who was a doctor, to come up with all of this and help her out. She told me that one of Mandy's closest friends in school was the daughter of a renowned medical professional and she was pretty sure that she had gone to them for help and this is how they had chosen to help her out. That was all that we needed and two days back when we met again, Abigail testified against Mandy and she had no way out of this because she had been caught in her lies now. My lawyer and I managed to turn the tables on her and prove that it was actually she who was harassing me with fake claims and that she actually had no disability at all, that she had been lying all along. So the case was dismissed, but unfortunately she was screwed because of the stunt that she had pulled with the fake medical reports. Apparently her friend's father has not even been in on this and he was now suing his own daughter and Mandy because they had used the letterhead from the hospital that he worked in and his name to commit fraud and put him at risk of losing his license since we had filed an official complaint with the hospital for faking these reports and he had to go to lengths to prove that it was not him but his daughter who had stolen supplies from his office to come up with these documents for Mandy. Naturally, anybody in his place would lose his mind if something like this were to happen. So I didn't exactly blame the guy. And it's not like he was just coming after Mandy. He was coming after his own daughter as well. But at least his own daughter had the means to defend herself with a lawyer because she had been working for a couple of months now. Unlike Mandy, who had been completely reliant on us, and after she was exposed for what she had done, which she had promised would not happen, she got thrown out by her friend as well, and now she really has nowhere else to go. So she tried to come back to me, but I told her that there was no way that I was taking her back anymore, and it was pretty stupid of her to even try coming back because she had tried to make me seem like the villain, just because... I wanted her to get a job and there was no way that I was going to help her out anymore. I really had treated her like my own daughter for the past couple of years, ever since I had started dating her father. But now that time is gone. I made it very clear to her and she eventually had to leave. After that, she called Harry and Abigail and started to apologize to them for everything that she had done so far and then asked them to send her some money because her friend had kicked her out of her apartment where she had been living so far and where she had come up with this incredibly clever plan of suing me with fake harassment claims. And then they plan on splitting the money that they received as a settlement from this case. Unfortunately, not only had their stupid plan backfired really badly, but they had also earned themselves another lawsuit on their hands. But only this time, they were the ones who were in trouble and she was screwed now because while I had never done anything to harass Mandy, the lawsuit against her and her friend were all based on true claims and fraud is a pretty serious charge. Anyway, all of that has been happening, but I have stayed out of it because it's really none of my business anymore. However, Mandy sent me a text saying that she really needed my help and said that I was kind of responsible for all of this in the first place because I had threatened to kick her out instead of asking nicely. I guess she forgot that I had been asking her nicely for a couple of months before. I finally got down to business and I said that to her, but she responded to that by saying that it was ridiculous of me to do so because I, as a banker, and Harry, with his great job in the Middle East, had enough money to support her. But instead of that, we were being stingy and accusing her of being a freeloader when we were just cheap misers 
And that's what she had been mad about initially and had blown everything out of proportion. But at the end of the day, she wanted me to really ask myself if her living with me had been such a financial strain on me that I had to be so cruel towards her. And now I'm wondering if AITA, because I kicked out my fiance's daughter after she refused to get a job for almost a year. Update one. Hi. Thank you so much, everyone, for all the lovely messages that I have been receiving. And also for the not so lovely ones, since a lot of you said that Harry, Abigail and I were pretty spineless for the past year since we hadn't kicked Mandy out when we initially realized that she was being a freeloader and really had no intention of getting a job after college. And a lot of people think that we were being too hard on her since it's not like we were struggling with money and couldn't afford to support her financially. So forcing her to get a job and kicking her out if she refused seemed very unnecessary and harsh. Let me just clarify that the reason we had found it so difficult to kick her out or be hard on her initially was not because she had always been a sweet girl as a teenager. And that's the version of her that we were mostly used to. But after college, I guess she has changed and become very jaded. Even though I'm not a biological parent, I did feel very emotionally connected with her because I lived with her for almost three years before she left for college. And it was hard for me to be hard on her because I'm naturally a very soft-hearted person. I guess the real problem was that Mandy thought that she could take my kindness for granted and do whatever she wanted. And as for the people who were mad about the fact that we wanted her to get a job, even though we are pretty well off, it's really not just the money that we're concerned about. We wanted her to learn how to be responsible and live a life on her own. Also, being a freeloader doesn't always mean that she doesn't contribute to the household financially. But she never even bothered to contribute in any other way. She never offered to run any errands for me or do any of the chores for me. And I would have to do it all by myself, even though I used to be really tired after coming back home from work. And then I had to do twice the work that I would have had to do usually now that there was another person living with me. We didn't have a housekeeper either since owing to the location of my house, which happens to be pretty secluded, nobody would be willing to work here for long. And believe me, it had been tried and tested already. So I was mostly used to doing all the work on my own, but I expected her to help me out a bit and she didn't even try to do that. It was just really frustrating and I don't think I need to explain further. Anyway, these are a couple of reasons that we found it necessary for her to get a job and move out because that's what everyone does. Now that all of that is out of the way, I can talk about what happened with Mandy and I. The last time that we spoke, it was on text. And this was about three days back. After I received that message from her, I made the post here because I was in a dilemma. But then since most of the comments said NTA, I stopped worrying about it so much and did not even respond to her. I also spoke to Harry about it and he was of the same opinion that I don't need to bother myself with it anymore because she's an adult. She needs to realize that actions have consequences and nobody is going to constantly bail her out. Abigail, on the other hand, was a bit iffy about the entire situation. Just to be clear, she did not have anything against what I did regarding the fact that I filed an official complaint and she's fine with that since she herself was the one to testify against Mandy. But she just doesn't want Mandy to go to jail and ruin her future because of this insanely stupid mistake. So she has told us that she is going to try and come back and make sure that they are able to come to a settlement with Mandy's friend's dad because if they don't settle out of court, this case might go to trial and then there's no telling what might happen. The two of them might even end up in prison because fraud, like I said, is a pretty serious charge. So far, I don't even know if the legal proceedings have started against them or not since I haven't even bothered to find out. But if Abigail is coming back to help Mandy out, 
I'm sure that she will be in good hands since Abigail used to be a corporate lawyer until she switched to running her parents' bakery with her when she moved away. So even if we are not on speaking terms with her anymore, at least Harry and I have the satisfaction of knowing that she will be taken care of. It's not like she's being completely abandoned here. And honestly, even if she had, it would not be a big deal because at 21, I think she should have the brains to tell right from wrong. Anyway, that's my side of things. And I really hope that she's able to sort everything out. But Harry and I are staying out of this. Update two. Hi, so it's been two weeks since my last update. And from what I know, the legal proceedings against Mandy and her friend have started. I have stayed in touch with Abigail and she's actually living with me right now. Thankfully, Mandy was able to get another friend to help her out and has been staying with her. I think I had made it sufficiently clear that I did not want her coming back here. And I guess they're respecting that. Abigail, however, I have no issues with her and she's actually been a great help around the house. From what I know, the hospital itself, along with the doctor, is suing the two of them. So it's a pretty tough battle to fight. But Abigail is determined not to let her daughter go to jail. And I have faith in her that she will be able to bring them to an out of court settlement. Of course, the team of lawyers that the hospital has are all sharks and it's pretty daunting for her to return to the world of lawyers after so long. But it's good to see that even though she's a bit rusty, it's her motherly instincts that are keeping her going because she knows that she has to protect Mandy. We have had a discussion about this recently since she seemed very overworked and I just couldn't help myself but ask her why she was so determined to keep Mandy out of prison when she knew that what she had done was really wrong. And if she had to spend a couple of months in jail, she probably deserved it and would be much better off. Because when she was out, she would know her actions have consequences and she just can't get away with everything. Abigail told me that she could understand why everybody was so upset with Mandy, but at the end of the day, she couldn't let her daughter go to prison. She will continue to fight for her, but she has also told me that she had not yet forgiven Mandy for the stunt that she had pulled and was still very upset with her. But even then, she felt like she had to protect her. And I guess I understand where she's coming from. Relationships are complicated and nothing is ever black and white. I really feel bad for Abigail and Harry. I have just known Mandy for the past couple of years, but they have been raising this little girl from when she was a baby. And now to think that she might end up behind bars for this mistake that she's made, it's just insane. And if I put myself in their place, I don't even know what I would have done. Harry and I have been speaking to each other for hours almost every day for the past couple of weeks. And I can tell that he is really distraught. I know that he's trying really hard to hide it from me, but he's very worried about Mandy and what is going to happen to her. So far, Abigail has been handling things pretty well, and it seems unlikely that this might go to trial anytime soon. But even if it's unlikely, the chances are never zero. I have been doing my best to comfort him, but every time I start talking about Mandy and what's going on with her, he tells me that he doesn't want to hear it because he's far away from home at the moment and it's just going to stress him out even more. So we talk about other things, but I know that he's thinking about her and I so desperately want him to know that everything is going to be fine. But the sad part is, even I don't know that for sure. I feel really bad because if Mandy had never acted out that way initially, she wouldn't be in this mess right now. I do feel slightly responsible. I know this is not my fault, but then part of me can't help but think what might have been if I hadn't filed a complaint with the hospital. But I know it's pointless to think about these things. So I try to keep these thoughts at bay and just try to focus on my work. I guess that's what everybody's doing at the moment to deal with all of this, because no matter what, all of us have really been emotionally attached to Mandy and we never would want anything bad to happen to her. Anyway, all I can do is drown myself in my work and hope for the best.
It's not like Mandy and I are on speaking terms right now, so I cannot comfort her, and I'm sure that I wouldn't even want to speak to her at the moment. Everything is still pretty fresh at the moment, and I cannot forget the fact that she hasn't tried to reach out to me or even apologize for anything that she has done. So I don't even know what we would talk about until she apologizes. I'm really sorry if I seem to be rambling or if all of this seems a bit incoherent, but my thoughts really are all over the place at the moment because I'm very worried about the future and what it holds for all of us as a family. I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best, but I have something good to share in my next update. Thank you so much for hearing me out. Update three. Hey, it's been close to two months since my last update and I am thrilled to tell you guys that we were able to get Mandy out of trouble and come to an out of court settlement. It cost us an exorbitant amount of money, but Harry, Abigail and I all pulled together some money to bail Mandy and her friend out. We took as little money as we could from her friend because we felt that Mandy was responsible for most of this mess, so it seemed only fair that we paid it all off. Of course, her friend was at fault too for even agreeing to this plan, but we are choosing to ignore that right now. And before anybody comes at us for going easy on Mandy, we just want to let you know that the only reason we bailed her out in the first place was because we did not want to go to trial. But that doesn't mean that she's off the hook permanently. Before we cleared the amount, we made her sign a legal document that she would pay us back the entire amount that she owed us in full once she had a job. She could choose to pay it all back in installments or all at once. That was up to her. But within the next five years, she would have to make sure that we received the money that she owed us. After the settlement, she sent us all an email saying how sorry she was for everything that she had to put us through and that she was grateful for our help. She promised that she was going to try and do better and not be such a brat anymore. And the first step in order to do that was to actually get a job. So she has been working as a secretary in a firm for the past couple of weeks and she keeps all three of us updated through emails. I haven't seen her since the day that she signed the document stating that she would pay us back the money in the next five years and our relationship is still very strained but maybe with time these scars will fade as well. For now I'm just glad that she's stepping up and taking life seriously. She has had a really close call recently and almost destroyed her life once. I'm sure that she will not do anything to risk it anytime soon. Update four. Hey, so it's been two years since I even logged into this account the last time. But anyway, a couple of months back, I finally got married. Harry finished his project and returned at the end of last year and then we immediately decided that we had to get married as soon as possible. We were also able to sort of mend our relationship with Mandy after a lot of conversations and apologies from her end to us. So she was obviously present at the wedding. I wouldn't say that we are back to normal and everything is great, but we are working on it. She has been doing well in her career and is growing up to be a responsible person which we are all thankful for. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.